Hi, if you would be able to solve this problem 50-60 years ago, you probably would get a Nobel Prize. But today we can solve such problems routinely. And uh, today's question is, a new virus has recently been discovered that infects human lymphocytes. The virus can be grown in the laboratory using cultured lymphocytes as host cells. Design an experiment using radioactive label that would tell you if the virus contains DNA or RNA. And before I proceed with uh, explanation, I want to show you a picture of the uh, lymphocytes that is taken uh, with the use of the scanning microscopy. And here, uh, here uh, is lymphocyte. And with red color, I want to show how big is the nucleus in this uh, lymphocyte it, taking almost 80-90% uh, of the lymphocytes and there is um, many different types of, of lymphocytes uh, for example T lymphocyte T cells and B cells and also natural killer cells and um, also uh, here I want to show um, with different color. Uh, this is a um, red blood cell and uh, red blood cell cannot be uh, infected with DNA or RNA virus because it doesn't have nucleus and in order to replicate virus needs a um, nucleus of the cell and cannot replicate without uh, such a machinery. So um, in order to proceed with designing our experiment, we have to tell the difference between DNA and RNA. And um, for example, in DNA, we can find such bases as adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. And in uh, RNA, we can find also adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. So as you see, these uh, three bases are the same in DNA and RNA, and these uh, two bases, zymine and uracil, are different. So we will use this uh, difference uh, in order to differentiate between uh, RNA and DNA. And uh, what should we do? As we are told, we have to use um, radioactive labeling. And in order to make a radioactive label, we have to use for DNA zymine, because it doesn't make sense to make a radioactive labeling for adenine, guanine, or cytosine, because all these uh, three bases are also uh, can be found in RNA. So we prepare um, zymine triphosphate, and this has three phosphorus, and two of these phosphorus would be later cut away, and energy would be used to build a strength of the uh, DNA sugar phosphate uh, strand and uh, also we will use um, uh, uracil to make a second uh, radioactive labeling and this is also uracil triphosphate we have three phosphorus here to also would be cut during the process of building of uh, a strand and um, what kind of uh, labeling we can use, uh, what kind of radioactive uh, atoms or elements we can use. Uh, we can use phosphorus as it is present in each base and uh, phosphorus, uh, radioactive phosphorus can be uh, phosphorus 32 and it has uh, 15 um, protons and 17 neutrons and naturally occurring phosphorus has 31 uh, um, mass is 31 
So, and uh, half life of the Phosphorus 32 is uh, uh, about 14 days. And also we can use um, Carbon 14. And Carbon 14 has uh, six, uh, 6 protons and uh, 8 uh, neutrons. And half uh, life of the carbon is about uh, 6,000 years. And carbon naturally occurring in the form carbon-12. Uh, about 99% of all carbon in nature is carbon-12. And carbon-13, uh, about 1%. And carbon-14, uh, uh, that is uh, radioactive, uh, is um, present about one particle per trillion particles, so it's very scary. Uh, and um, also for the next stage of our experiment, uh, we need two petri dishes, and in each petri dish we are going to um, we are going to add um, lymphocytes that is already infected with uh, unknown uh, virus. We don't know whether it is DNA or RNA based virus. So we just um, put uh, on the special prepared media that allows the growth of the lymphocytes and um, we are going to add uh, in one petri dish uh, DNA bases, uh, three of these bases uh, going to be the same as in RNA, so we are not going to label them uh, with radioactive marker, and one base is going to be radioactively labeled, we also add here, so uh, this is DNA and uh, if uh, our uh, virus is going to be a DNA virus, then it means that it's going to incorporate zymine that is radioactive. And um, for the second uh, plate, we are going to add uh, these three bases that is. Uh, also the same basis like in DNA and uh, this basis is not radioactive and one base that is going to be radioactive is uracil and if uh, virus uh, is uh, RNA based it's going to be uh, it's going to incorporate uracil and uh, also I want to mention that um, when virus enters the cell, in our case this is lymphocytes, it destroys uh, DNA of the cell with special restriction enzymes, just cut it to small pieces and uh, the whole cell machinery starts to work on replication of the virus. If it is a lytic virus, it's going to replicate hundreds and maybe thousands of times until all the resources of the um, cell would be uh, harvested and it's going to burst the cell and uh, the next cycle would be infecting of the other cells, other uh, lymphocytes. So uh, what does it mean that in such a cell um, or in such petri dish after a certain period of time um, if we prepare these cells and extract um, DNA uh, from such a, a sample the only DNA, uh, at least DNA that is uh, long uh, enough to make a gene or make a um, whole genome of the virus would be uh, DNA uh, virus 
and uh, uh, DNA of the virus and uh, of course it's going to show also uh, uh, thymine if it is a DNA based virus but if uh, the virus uh, is not DNA based then uh, it's not going to show uh, rad radioactive uh, incorporated zymine because it's not going to incorporate zymine at all it's going to incorporate uracil so this petri dish wouldn't show any uh, radioactive uh, uh, strip when we run a gel and uh, if it does has a, a DNA based virus it's going to show such strip and same thing with uh, this petri dish that is uh, uh, RNA RNA uh, we are looking for RNA based virus in this petri dish and uh, same story here uh, if a virus is RNA based it's going to incorporate uh, RNA uh, uracil in its RNA and we are going to see a strip when we run a gel and I also want to add that um, if we use uh, carbon-14 uh, such exposure to special film that has a silver layer uh, going to take about three weeks and if we use phosphor-32 this um, going the period of exposure is going to be much shorter so uh, this is how um, we can differentiate between DNA based virus and RNA based virus. Uh, this is not the only one technique, there are uh, many other techniques exist. For example, uh, we can use PCR method and uh, uh, we can use uh, uh, specially designed uh, primer. If the sequence of this virus is already known and we just want to confirm uh, that this is exact virus that we are looking for. With this technique we even can uh, find uh, a specific strain of the virus just using uh, specific uh, for this virus uh, sequence. So uh, modern techniques allows us uh, many many other different possibilities and uh, I can talk about different methods in my future videos and that's all for today. Thank you for attention, uh, thumbs up if you like my video, please subscribe to my channel, I post new videos every week. Thank you for attention today and goodbye.